Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good morning to uh, Teresa and Erica, Amy, and yes, I added your aunt to my prayer list. Charlotte, Stacy, Jan and Larry, Joe and Charlene. All right, so I guess you guys probably gasp when you saw my hair <laughs> um, because I changed it. So you know how I am. I like I like a little change every once in a while. So yeah, it's going to take a little getting used to. But thank you, Jan. I appreciate that. Um, I came home yesterday and Paul was like, who is this woman walking into the backyard from the garage? And he was like, I don't think I've seen your hair that dark hardly ever. And I think maybe I've done it once, but I'm not sure I've done it this dark since uh, I've been married to Paul. So anyway, trying to get back a little closer to my natural color. So even though this is maybe a little redder, that, but I like it. So we're, I'm just going to try to get used to it. But anyway, thank you, Erica. All right. So good morning to everybody this morning. It is such a beautiful spring morning out there. And I, I hope everybody is doing okay. We didn't have any um, problems with storms that have been up in Oklahoma and have been down here. I think most of the storms here were south of us, but there were some pretty severe storms. And I now worry about my brother who's up in Chicago. And, um, you know, he's he's had a lot of storms lately too. So um, we just have to keep each other in prayer when it comes to the, to the spring weather, don't we? All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this Friday morning with Lion Bites Day 130. And it says, this: the title is Through Faith. It says, I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japhtha, Japhtha and David, and Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and and rooted and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released, so that they might gain an even better resurrection. 
Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning and they were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. And that comes from Hebrews eleven, thirty-two through 38. It says the, wor the world was not worthy of them. These men and women of faith did mighty exploits for the kingdom through faith. They sought a better kingdom, for they received the promise of the Messiah, and by faith they lived in expectation of him. O oh, my sons and daughters, you are living in that better kingdom. You are called to join your faith with the faith of all those who went before you and do the same exploits. The men and women in this list were not more exceptional than you are. They faced difficulties, challenges, fears, insecurities, and loneliness just as you do. Yet you have the privilege of knowing Jesus and having the indwelling of my Holy Spirit. You have daily empowerment. You have daily access to my life. So as you read this, look to me and cry out for more. Do not be satisfied with the life that you have led so far. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. So have faith. Believe my word and step out. Listen for my voice and have faith. I will do what I have said. Through faith, begin, the, through faith, begin to boldly conquer the things that come against you to hold you back from being who I've called you to be, one who walks by faith. Through faith, begin to see yourself as one who is equipped with the life and power that comes from me. See yourself as one who operates in the gifts of the Spirit, one who hears my voice clearly, and one who is not dismayed or deterred by difficulty. See yourself by faith. So read through the entire chapter of, of uh, Hebrews 11, underline the parts that thrill your soul, and write out the sections that inspire you. Let this truth go deep within, and then declare out loud, The Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead also gives life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in me. Romans eight eleven. With your spiritual eyes, your eyes of faith, see Him living and dwelling on the inside of you. I've been thinking about this because Hebrews 11, 1 through 3 is our scripture for Sunday for the sermon. And it talks about faith and, and about, um, you know, having that confidence in things that we don't see. And I was thinking yesterday about, you know, how this plays out. You know, for example, there's a lot of people who say, We've got to have proof of certain things. We, you know, we've got to have proof. There, there, there are people that will say, you know, there's an evolution. It happened with the Big Bang. Do you believe that Big Bang, or do you believe in the Genesis creation? A friend and I, uh, of mine and I were talking this week about just such a thing and how he had been asked that, and um, and so he said, you know, really, I believe in a God that's big enough to kind of, you know, do it however he wants to. He speaks it. Um, it is. And then it may come about through some sort of scientific process. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily an either or kind of thing. It's it's still God. It's God doing this big thing. So I've been kind of thinking about that and uh, thinking about my own theology on that. Um, and then thinking about the fact that there's a lot that happens and a lot that can happen uh, in our life when we step out on faith. But sometimes we don't step out on faith because we're fearful or because we think we have to have proof. Um, really, it comes down to fear of what people think, failure, all of that. It really doesn't have anything to do with God because if our mind is focused on God and we see God as a big enough God, we're going to be able to walk with him in faith, even though we may not know what the results are at the end. And so, you know, to see this list of people who have walked in that and to know that there are even greater things that we can walk in, we just have to do it in faith and we have to trust him and we have to turn ourselves over to him every single day. Um, but to to just allow him to work in our lives is uh, uh, it's an amazing process, and I really believe that God can do more with us than we can ever imagine if we'll just trust Him. 
and we'll walk with him, even in those circumstances when things may not make sense to us. That's what faith is all about. I think about Noah, for example. I mean, it hadn't even rained and um, and there was no sign of it. Yet he knew in his, in his spirit that he was to build that, that ark. And that he was, you know, God brought all of the animals and he put, you know, he, they were all there, just like God said, God did that. And then the people were laughing at him all the way up until the flood water swept them away. And then they were sorry for that. So I don't know. I want to be a no, I don't want to be that person sitting on the sideline laughing because something doesn't make sense to me. I mean, who am I? I'm not all that smart, really. So why in the world would I question God who is, who who has created the whole universe and, um, and has done far greater things than I ever will accomplish? Oh, Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you just as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and amen. Okay. So, um, we are going to be in, we're going to be doing some, a little bit more boring reading in, in numbers today. Um, we're going to talk about a couple more groups. So we're in verse 42 of, of numbers chapter seven, and it says on the sixth day, Elisa, son of dual leader of the tribe of Gad presented his offering. His offering consisted of a silver platter weighing three and one fourth pounds, a silver basin weighing one and three fourths pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. They were both filled with grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with the incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, and one year old male lamb for a burnt offering and a male goat for a sin offering for a peace offering he brought two bulls five rams five male goats and five one-year-old male lambs this was the offering brought by elisha son of duel and on the seventh day elisha son of amahud leader of the tribe of ephraim presented his offering his offering consisted of a silver platter weighing how much? Three and one fourth pounds and a silver basin weighing how much? One and three quarter pounds as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. They were both filled with grain offerings of choice, flour moistened with olive oil. He also brought a gold container weighing four ounces, which was filled with incense. He brought a young bull, a ram, a one-year-old male for a burnt offering, and a male goat for a sin offering. For a peace offering, he brought two bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five one-year-old male lambs. This was the offering brought by Elishma, son of ah Ahamahud. Ahamahud. <laughs> okay, so... The, um, you know, as I was reading this and I'm like, this is the same thing that we've read for the last few days, but what, what really came to my mind and maybe, maybe what we can glean from this as we go through, um, yet another little bout a day or two of, of the, of the same sort of reading in numbers, um, is that everybody had, there was, everybody was expected to bring something and it was pretty equal. Everybody contributed to the furnishing of the tab of the tabernacle. And so what this says to me is that we all are needed to um, be present in the kingdom of God and to contribute to the kingdom of God. And we all have something to offer. And, um, and we trust that, you know, God's going to provide that. That's the, our gifts, our talents, our time. We all have the same amount of time and yet we just use it differently. We fill it differently from one another, but we all have the same amount of time. And so uh, uh, if we were to designate a part of that time to serving God, then think about what the kingdom of God would be like. So I'm going to say more about that when we get, to, um, to our last reading, but before we get there, we're going to go to Obadiah and we are still in chapter one and well, there is only one chapter and um, we are going to be in verse 10 today. Let me make sure I have that right. 
Yes, 10 to 14. All right. My little marker wasn't in the right place. All right. Because of the violence you did to your close relatives in Israel, you will be filled with shame and destroyed forever. When they were invaded, you stood aloof, refusing to help them. Foreign invaders carried off their wealth and cast lots to divide up Jerusalem. But you acted like one of Israel's enemies. You should not have gloated when they exiled your relatives to distant lands. You should not have rejoiced when the people of Judah suffered such misfortune. You should not have spoken arrogantly in that terrible time of trouble. You should not have plundered the land of Israel. When they were suffering such calamity, you should not have gloated over their destruction. They were suffering such calamity when they were suffering such calamity. You should not have seized their wealth. When they were suffering such calamity, you should not have stood at the crossroads killing those who tried to escape. You should not have captured the survivors and handed them over in the terrible time of trouble. Okay, so uh, in this passage, what's happened, remember yesterday I told you that the, the Edomites were the descendants of Esau. And the the descendants of um, Jacob were those who who were occupying Judah and Israel, and so um, the Edomites, even though they were cousins to those that were in, the Judeans and the Israelites, when the the Israelites and Judeans came under attack, the Edomites stood by and laughed at them basically. They did not come and rescue them. They did not do what what family really should do is where you go and you're you're you know you support those who are in trouble and you help them. Instead, they stood by, and not only that, not only did they stand by and do nothing, but then once all of it had taken place and they were at their lowest and and and, um, and everything was destroyed, then the Edomites came and plundered. They came and took whatever it was that they wanted. So they poured salt into the wound and, um, and it was not for a healing purpose. It was, it was to agitate. That does not make God very happy. And so when we look at this, um, we think about the fact that, you know, we have opportunities like this too. And do we take it when we look at the whole human race, as being our brothers and sisters because we're all children of God and we don't help another person. Um, how do you think God feels about that? I would think probably not very well. Um, when we are selfish and self-centered and we want our way and, and what that help looks like is not always just feeding and giving them, you know, what they need. Um, I mean, I think you have to use wisdom because there's a, we know that there's a lot of people out there who want us to fuel their, their habit that's killing them. And I don't want to fuel that, but to genuinely help somebody that, you know, is down and out, you know, that's blessed by God. But if we don't do that, then who, what does that say about us? It certainly doesn't, you know, show that we're a follower of Christ because Christ helped Christ saw those people that others didn't see. And so, um, you know, when we, when we look at this, we have to, we have to do a little bit of self-examination, don't we? And we have to say, you know, we don't want to be like the Edomites and we don't want God's, um, blessing to be lifted from us because that's what's happening here in this, uh, passage. Okay. So then let's turn over now to Luke chapter 19, verse 11. And it says, the crowd was listening to everything Jesus said, and because he was nearing Jerusalem, he told them a story to correct the impression that the kingdom of God would begin right away. He said, a nobleman was called away to a distant empire to be crowned king and then return. Before he left, he called together 10 of his servants and divided among them 10 pounds of silver, saying, invest this for me while I am gone. But his people hated but. But his people hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we do not want him to be our king. After he was crowned king, he returned and he called in the servants to whom he had given the money. He wanted to find out what their profits were. The first servant reported, Master, I invested your money and I made 10 times the original amount. 
Well done, the king exclaimed. Exclaimed, You are a good servant. You have been faithful with a little I entrusted to you, so you will be governor of ten cities as your reward. The next servant reported, Master, I invested your money and I made five times the original amount. Well done, the king said. You will be governor over five cities. But the third servant brought back only the original amount of money and said, Master, I hid the money and kept it safe. I was afraid because you are a hard man to deal with, taking what isn't yours and harvesting crops that you didn't plant. You wicked servant, the king roared. Your own words condemn you. If you knew that I am a hard man who takes what isn't mine and harvests crops, who takes what isn't mine and harvests crops I didn't plant, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then, turning to the others standing nearby, the king ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one who has ten pounds. But master, they said, we already has, well, he already has 10 pounds. Yes, the king replied, and to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. For from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. And as for these enemies of mine who didn't want me to be their king, bring them and execute them right here in front of me. Okay, so basically what this is saying is that God gives each and every one of us certain resources. He gives us talents. He gives us gifts. Sometimes he blesses us with extra dollars. Um, He gives us, you know, I think about people who are blessed with a big house. They could use that house to hold Bible studies and gatherings and, and to see it as a place where God's work can be done rather than just in enjoying it themselves. Um, I think about the talents that were given. Some people are just given a few talents, but they use those talents for the glory of God and God multiplies the blessing. Sometimes he gives us other, other talents and gifts. You know, we, we learn, we discover things we didn't even know about ourselves. And, 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 and then there are other ways that he blesses us as well. But he asks us to use it. So going back to what I said a little while ago, in that we all are given the same amount of time. We just choose to use it differently than one another. Every one of us that are followers of Jesus are called to multiply the kingdom. That's what this parable is about. We are to take what we have, time that we all are given, talents, whatever that is, whatever other resources that we have, we are called to take that and to use it for the glory of God. We are, ta- we are called to use it to bring others into the kingdom, to share Jesus with the world around us and to do it in a variety of creative ways. You know, we do it in our workplaces. We do it when we are out and about running errands. We do it in our civic groups. We do it in, even in our church groups, when we teach Sunday school, when we share in children's church, when, you know, we don't just say, well, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, I don't want to do that. If we were, if we had kingdom mindset, then we would look at it and we would say, this is more important than all of the other stuff I spend my time doing. It is more important because this has an eternal effect. So when I invest Uh, my resources, whether it's time, energy, talent, money, whatever it is, when I invest that, am I investing it in things that bring me pleasure? Am I investing in things that are really not all that worthwhile? Or am I investing it in the kingdom? Am I doing any good to help bring people to this place where they, they understand the love of God? where they feel it, where they experience it, where they get to share it, because that's most important. And we see here kind of the response of of the one who gave the talents, the king. Um, you know, we see his response. The one who used it and, and uh, pro- you know, profited and then used it again and reinvested it, then that person got even more. Um, and, and then the one who didn't do anything with it, you know, they, they were, um, they were not given that blessing. In fact, it was taken away from them. 
And I think about that even, you know, um, I think about singing, for example, those of us who sing, um, if we don't use our voice, this instrument that God has given us for his glory, we don't use it at all. Maybe we, we just, you know, sing with the radio or whatever. That's a whole different way of singing than it is to really use it and to allow God to, to work through what you're doing when you sing, then the voice you know, like anything, it it starts um, getting weaker. And the more we use it, the stronger it gets and the longer it lasts. Well, it's like that with any talent, any gift that we have, right? When you, when you use it, you become more proficient in it and it becomes more effective. When we don't do it, when we don't practice piano, when we don't, you know, do what we're, what, use whatever it is we, we are given, then it, it, it seems to go away. I mean, probably all of us have experienced that to some degree in our life. So I want to ask that we take this to heart today and that we just, we ask God, God, what, what am I not using in a way that's pleasing to you and how can I use it? And it may mean that we have to carve out more time in our schedule to use it carve out some of the stuff that's not necessary, some of the stuff that's only pleasing to us, some of the laziness and the, um, you know, the complacency that we have in our life and use the time that we're being complacent to actually be doing something positive in the kingdom of God. All right. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We continue to pray for the family of Lily Camp. Um, her funeral is tomorrow and, uh, we're continuing to pray for Katie. Um, we are praying today for Betsy, who is Amy Kitzmiller's aunt who had surgery on her eye and has had some complications. And so, um, if you would please keep Betsy in your prayers. Um, I want us to continue to pray for Israel, Jerusalem in particular, um, because they've had some attacks going on. And it's, it's pretty volatile right now. So, um, we want to, we want to pray, um, you know, going, just saying one more word, cause I had this written down in my notes and it just came back to my mind is when we were talking in Obadiah about, um, the kingdom, you know, really partnering with the people of God and protecting them and all of that. That's why it's so important that we pray for Israel now. That's why it's so important that, um, we be allies with them because anybody who does not partner with the Lord or goes against the Lord's people, who is an adversary to the Lord's people, is an adversary to God. And we don't want to do that. And so when I start cringing, when I hear, you know, politicians and stuff talking about, we need to not, we, we, we need to separate ourselves from Israel. Oh, no, we don't. And so as Christians, we know this because we read it in God's word. So we want to pray. We want to pray for our nation to remain, you know, connected to Israel, to be partners with them and protectors. And then we need to um, also just pray for them now for their protection and all that's going on in the city. Um, also, we want to, um, I just want to bring to you a couple of others in our congregation to pray for Sandy Webb, um, just for stability and, um, for her going through her physical therapy. And then also for Mary Beth, who's been kind of ill lately and has had some complications. All right. And then of course we want to pray for Peggy Rowland's grandson, Jason, who has had several blood transfusions or a couple print. Uh, blood transfusions lately. We want to just pray for continued positive results. Oh Lord, we praise you and thank you on this beautiful spring day. We thank you for the little cooler temperatures. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you, Lord, for these beautiful days when even when storms come, you protect us and you keep us safe. There have been so many storms that have gone through the nation in recent weeks and months. Um, I pray, Lord, for all of those who have had homes destroyed, those who have lost loved ones, those who have been traumatized by uh, what they have seen, what they've experienced. Lord, I just pray for healing. I pray for provision. Um, I pray, Lord, for um, 
for these people to just be comforted in this time. I pray also for those who have lost loved ones, for the Tots family, for uh, Katie and the Camp family. I pray, Lord, that your arms of love and comfort and healing will be upon them and around them and that they will know how very much they are loved, that they will feel your love through those who circle them and, and those who love them through the midst of their storms. I pray, Lord, today that you will be with Israel for all of the things that are going on there in Jerusalem, the, the turmoil and the tension. I pray, Lord, a hedge of protection around your people. I pray, Lord, that um, that you will help us as the United States of America to, to um, remain friends with them and to stand with them and to protect them as best we possibly can. Father, I pray that you will bring about a spiritual revival, a revival of, of those of us who have found ourselves being complacent, those of us who have, who have given in to the fears and into the doubts and that have kept us from really expanding your kingdom and being of service to you. I pray, Lord, instead that you will fill us with boldness, that you will remove that fear so that we don't have that as an excuse or something to lean on, but instead that you fill us with passion, passion that comes from your spirit to go out and to love our neighbor and to make a difference, to, to remind people of your love and or even to tell them for maybe for the first time how much you love them. I pray, Lord, for for each person that we have named that needs your special touch of healing. I pray, Lord, for those who are here on this devotional this morning who may not be saying what what needs they have, but yet they have needs and they need your touch and they need um, they need lifted up and encouraged. And I pray, Lord, that you will do that in your special way. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, help us to be foolish enough today to stand for you, foolish enough to trust you, foolish enough to call upon you, and foolish enough to wait on you. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing right back here on Sunday morning. Have a great Friday and Saturday, and I will look forward to seeing you guys Sunday. Take care, dear friends. Bye.